Hello, my name is Ryan Morris. I'm the Market Product Manager of SIC uh, for the US for our machine vision portfolio. Uh, today I want to show a quick little demo on how we can actually utilize our brand new Inspector 830 camera and going to go over some of the uh, AI algorithms uh, that we have on board, specifically the anomaly detection and the onboard classification that we can do with our cameras here. Uh, going to give you a quick little tutorial on how we'd actually go about saying this. I know not everybody might have moaning, moaning arms and bulging arms, so in this sense here, we're going to just lay the camera directly on its side um, and mount it about 10 inches away from the box that the camera would have came in. So nice little can demo for you with the material that you have. Um, so I have right now uh, the camera on its side mounted approximately 10 inches away from the box. And as we take an image here and we can see the actual box itself. So um, again, as I have it mounted on the side, we can start to see some of the table here. So uh, what I'm going to have you guys do is go and adjust your horizontal field of view to try to eliminate out the table there a little bit. So we're just looking at the box or the packaging itself. So as we go and create an anomaly inspection, we're going to go and click on the anomaly detection tool. And we are going to start to train an anomaly network on say uh, a small portion of the region um, for of the box itself. I'm going to add an active image here. Again, this is what a good box is supposed to look like. I take another trigger here. I'm going to add another active image. So the nice thing about the anomaly tool is it requires good images only. So as I, I go and shift the box back and forth as I'm actually doing an inspection, I'm going to, I'm forgetting to actually add the images as I take it. So don't forget to do that. So adding images. And on the camera itself, you can take up to 100 images to train an anomaly network. Um, typically, you know, for a demo sense, I'll do maybe five to 10 images uh, of, of good parts. Um, you can see we could add bad images here as well if we wanted to, but definitely not required. So as we go down, we'll see we have an image bank of, of what good images look like. And we can go and hit train now. So we'll go and train, we do have um, a small subset, so three of those five are going to be used in the training. Two of the five are going to be used to evaluate um, the network against the untrained images. Um, so tool performance, we have fast versus precise. Um, I'd say for this one, I'm going to kind of put it down somewhere in the top tier. So you know, slide the, the tool to be a little bit more precise. You can see down here, um, we downsampled the images, so what the downsampled is, 78 to 289, and we can do about a 29, 28 pixel defect. As we you know, go all the way to fast, you can see you know, it's downsampled a little bit more with a much higher 550 pixel defect that we're able to detect. So, um, and we go to precise, we got down to eight pixels. Um, so I'm gonna go back to roughly this uh, three quarters setting roughly, and I'm gonna hit confirm. And now the camera is going and training the network itself. Again, you can see it took three to four seconds, and now I have trained an AI network. So as I go and trigger my image, there we go. So we have our good image. We have an, an anomaly score. So the anomaly score um, varies from uh, zero all the way up to 250. So as we go into the evaluation, we can see you know some of the the wrongly classified images here and I can say, you know, no, this is actually a good image. And this is gonna also be a good image here. So I can go and train those, um, you know, make sure that they are uh, properly classified. Um, but again, as my train network here, I can go and trigger it again. And we get that anomaly score. So this is where we can set our pass fail threshold basically. So if I wanted to have a real tight score, I can see as I reduce that down, I get a, a failed inspection region because my anomaly score detection is way too low. Um, so again, we're passing that scenario there. Um, you can see our, our region visualization range. So as I go and move my visual, visualization range around, you can see you know, how we're visualizing what we're thinking are different anomalies within the image here. But as we see here, we're, we're not uh, um, having a high enough anomaly score to actually fail. So as I go in here, and hopefully you guys can as well, go and take a, a Sharpie or something like that and maybe make some 
some defects you know on anywhere randomly on that box hopefully I got them all in a good position we'll find out and as we trigger here we can start to see some of those anomalies are starting to identify but you know we our score definitely wasn't high enough there so we can go and start to visualize those anomalies that I just drew in there a little bit better so as we go in again mark up some of the re regions and this is the nice this is the power of the AI is you know randomness and unknown where defects could possibly be um, you know as we start to see you know random defects here you know with a black background or a darker background and throw it in black there trying to do pixel counts or something along those lines is going to be very very difficult so just by simply you know, making a couple marks on here and, and training the network, we can actually go and um, detect some of these anomalies that I just introduced into the image here. So um, you know, we have four sides here, so please play around with your boxes. Um, but uh, a nice little section that we can actually show quickly um, how we can actually utilize the anomaly inspection tool. Uh, we are going to further on and go over our next AI algorithm with our classification uh, network that we're able to create directly on the device itself. So what I have for you today is just a, a sampling of some coins that I was able to commandeer from, from one of my colleagues in the office here. Um, but I'm going to do a quick, simple classification of just you know a coin identification. Is it a penny? Is it a nickel? Is it a euro? Um, so traditionally, you know, this might have been something that um, could have been accomplished with um, traditional machine vision, you know, with, you know, simple diameter checks of, you know, a penny is this diameter, a nickel is this diameter, um, euro is this diameter. Uh, but then also getting that data out. If I wanted to say, okay, if I have a measurement of this, then it is a nickel. You know, there's a little more expressions, conditions that we have to create in the camera itself to actually output that name. Um, if we just want to output the distance measurements, that's, that's one thing. But if we actually want to classify something, you know, AI really works easily and, and simply on that side. So um, we'll transition here to my screen. Um, so we do have our um, Inspector 830 set up here. Um, just like we had with our anomaly inspection, we're gonna do some on-device training with the AI. So as we take an image here, you can see we got a nice nickel in front of the camera. Um, so traditionally, again, if we wanted to you know, decipher what this is. Maybe I'm throwing a, uh, a circle tool here on my, I gotta update a reference image again, so I can, you know, fit a circle and we can see we get a diameter of, you know, 732. So um, I could simply just output that diameter um, of the circle that I find um, to let a PLC or something along those lines make a determination of what's actually, um, there we go, diameter what's actually in my field of view. So you can see we got a 732 diameter there. Pop this in roughly in the same spot, hopefully. And that one is not finding the diameter as well. So again, you know, we're dealing with contrast here. You see it's a fairly low contrast, um, you know, edge in some sense. So again, as we're trying to play around with traditional machine vision tools, you know, we have to take a lot of these considerations into factor, right? You know, do we have enough contrast? Is it in the right position? You know, we can see we got a diameter here. So we could output those diameters and make a determination externally in a PLC. Or if we want to do that internally, we could go and create expressions and say, okay, if I get a diameter of X, then this, or if I get a diameter of Y, then, then this. So it's, it's definitely possible with traditional machine tools, but I'm gonna show how easy we could possibly do this um, just by utilizing um, the AI classification algorithms here. So um, just like we did with the anomaly, we have AI classification, and this will be classifying um, classes on device. So we have default four classes. We can go up to 10 classes. Um, I have three sets of coins here, so I'm gonna just uh, cancel. I'm gonna delete that last class since I don't need it. I'm gonna name my first class a uh, penny. Got my second class of nickel. And I got my third class of euro. So with that, I'm gonna 
kind of just create a, a region of interest that I want to use to train my, my AI classification network. And I have a penny in front of the camera right now, so I'm just add that as an active image. Okay, rotate around, move it in the field view a little bit. I'm gonna add that as an active image here as well. Trigger again, add image. So again, power of AI here is hopefully anybody knows what a penny is, what a nickel is, or what class A should be, or what class B should be. And you're able to actually just example-based train you know, a, a class. So as we go back in here, I'm gonna take some more images, and now we got a nickel. So I'm gonna add that in here as well. Um, usually for demo purposes, I, I just take you know a handful of images, you know, five, six, seven, ten maybe. Um, again, we can go up to a hundred images if we wanted to. But just gonna again just a handful of images, different orientations, different uh, presentations, and as we can see here. You know, don't have to don't have the rigidity of the circle fitter not not hitting the, the nickel or the the penny. Um, we're able to actually just kind of look at a, a general region. And then we can go and throw the euro in here and take an image there. And let's add that into my euro pile. Another image there. And a little out of my field, so let's get that back in there a little bit. Get a little more centered. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Now we're now we're moving again. Okay. Yeah. This camera is about four and a half inches mounted away, so it's uh, I got a pretty pretty small field of view as you can see here. So not a lot of room to work with, but fortunately coins are small and easy to come by here. So um, so just adding a few active images, and now we can go just like our. Um, Anomaly tool will just train this, this network for classifying right on the device itself. So we'll hit train, and it's taking those three different classes and training a network. So um, just like with the anomaly tool, um, you know, a couple seconds there, this is, you know, a little bit more data inputted right now, so it might take a little bit longer, but, uh, um, you know, still able to train a network within about 16 seconds. So. To make it a little more robust, I decided to, to add a few extra images to the nickel and penny since there seemed to be a little uh, uh, crosstalk communication of what the prediction was. It wasn't as confident as I'd like to see it. So um, instead of using five images, I, I went and added 13 images each of the nickel and penny um, and kept the euro at that six images since that seemed to be a pretty confident uh, class score there. So as we go again, throw the euro in there. Uh, we can hit our trigger. There we go. Once we get in the field, now we're good. So we got our, our Euro prediction in there, um, you know, as we're moving that throughout the scene. So now we go and throw our nickel back in there. And we can see that we correctly predict a nickel. And we throw up a penny in there, trigger our camera. And we predict that penny that we saw. Move that around our scene a little bit. And we still get that prediction there. So, um, Again, took about 30 seconds this time to actually retrain the network once I add a few extra images in there. So um, not a whole whole mess of time there, but uh, able to have a quick classification type network with just uh, you know some change in your pocket, um, being able to quickly classify you know you know between multiple different classes. Uh, again, something that traditional machine vision probably could do a um, little bit more work as far as again fitting diameter tools, object locations, um, you know, not able to really necessarily do a pattern matches because rotations can happen. Um, we're training the AI classification network. You're able to just say, here's some example images of what a nickel, penny, and euro look like. Camera make the prediction, make, this, uh, make the classification of what I saw. So should hopefully streamline um, those type of applications where you need to have a class. And again, those classes could be coins or upside down, right side up, uh, good, bad, um, you know, whatever you can kind of think of as, as far as a class goes um, could be done on this camera with the onboard AI training. So again, thanks again. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions, um, any demos, more than happy to, to assist there. But uh, again, thanks again for joining me today.
If you want any more information about the Inspector 830, you can visit sick.com um, or email us at info at sick.com or you can reach out to me directly at the contact information below. Thank you.